Hello, everybody. Father Stephen Abrado, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. The featured link is right there for you. Thank you for joining us today. Please go to protestchildkilling.com, subscribe to my Rumble and YouTube channel. And if you think that my many ministries and campaigns like Rally for Personhood, Ireland, Repent, uh, on the Road for Life, my morning mass, this live stream that we do each day is worthwhile. I have a small favor to ask of you. Would you be willing to donate a small amount of money each month to help foster my ministry or many ministries, again, because I'm into a lot of different things. I'm the co-founder of the Men's March, mensmarch.com, and then, of course, rallyforpersonhood.com. I'm an advocate for Our Lady of America.com. I am deeply immersed in the personhood campaign to end preborn child killing, whether it be here in Florida or nationally. And I'd like to really raise about $500 more a month. I mean, that's a small amount. We're talking about $6,000 more a year. It probably doubles my fundraising. I mean, believe it or not, that's how little I bring in. Now, I've gotten some large donations over the last several years. Uh, and that has allowed me to not have to do any real fundraising. I don't really bring in that much money on a monthly basis. So what I'm asking for is very little. What I bring in is very little. And of course, I don't take any of that money in direct compensation for myself. I just pay some expenses, whether it be my travel expenses, for instance, uh, in the coming month, I am heading to Southern California. I'm heading to New Jersey for pro-life events, actually New York City, Southern California, New York City for men's uh, events, uh, personhood events. Both of them are personhood events involving centering around men. Actually, the New York City event is a little broader. It's the, the uh, Gift of Life walk that I've been a part of for many, many years. Uh, Dawn Askew, personhood of New York. So really, I take no direct compensation. Uh, it helps pays for my internet expenses, my traveling expenses, uh, those types of things. And uh, I would just really like to raise about $600 more a month. So you can go to protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com, not only subscribe to my Rumble and YouTube channels, and they're not monetized either. So I make no money off of Rumble or, <clears throat> or YouTube, and that's why I don't seek big numbers, right? I, I don't do that for the numbers. I don't do that for the following. I have a very, very small select following. And I, I've always um, uh, enjoyed the benefit of uh, Jesus providing the funds that I need, uh, not necessarily what I want, uh, but I've never wanted. So I'm satisfied with what our Lord does, uh, uh, tells me I need. 
Uh, but again, if uh, the Lord's grace, by the Lord's grace, by the Lord's will, if I could raise another $500 a month, uh, I would really be appreciative of that. I promise you to put it to good use. Again, it will not go to me directly by any means. It'll go to taking care of incidentals within the ministry. I receive no direct compensation from protest child killing or any of the ministry that uh, that I involved with. Well, it, certain exceptions, right? So this year I am getting a letter of good standing. I should say faculties for the year from the diocese that I live in, the Orlando Diocese. I'm a retired priest with the diocese, Archdiocese of Santa Fe, New Mexico. So I'm looking to um, uh, do some priestly ministry in this area here, the surrounding parishes. And of course, uh, that money would go uh, directly to me. Uh, I don't consider that really pro-life ministry. What I do here, uh, what I do on uh, my daily mass, uh, I, I it, those are peripheral ministries. Uh, important parts of my ministry, there's nothing more important than the mass that I celebrated. There's nothing more important than me and you praying together each day. Uh, but uh, uh, I don't take any money out of uh, anything that you guys will provide me, all right? Uh, so I want to promise you that no direct compensation from any donations that I receive. And I guess that's the way of putting it. Donations that I receive, I don't take any direct compensation from. If I earn money through my priestly ministry, then that is a different story. All right, so uh, please protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com, all the URLs we talk about, all the events we talk about, all of my ministries, my campaigns are all there, my Rumble and YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about selective outrage. <clears throat> selective outrage. Check out my mass from this morning, Eucharistic Adoration, my homily on preparing for Lent. So we talked about preparing for Lent. Today is Our Lady of Lords, the feast day of Our Lady of Lords. So Our Lady of Lords intercede for us. That's interesting. Okay, there it is. All right, so I want to talk about selective outrage. All right, we're going to get to that. We're also going to be doing the Angelus at 12 o'clock, 11 minutes more. So we pray together. That's what we do primarily. We come together and pray, and then I'll do some social commentary or church commentary or maybe some pro-life commentary, maybe some spiritual direction, scriptural reflection. Uh, it could be any number of things that we do each day, but primarily I like to pray together with you each and every single day. So before we get to selective outrage, uh, let us uh, do our opening prayers. And we always start off by invoking St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Uh, Fazel or Fazel, uh, yeah, so we will pray for you and your family. Let's consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping this valley of tears. Turn them, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promise of Christ. Let us pray. Remember, O most blessed Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided, inspired with this confidence, we fly unto thee. O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother, to you we come before you, we stand sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy clemency hear and answer us. Amen. St. Joseph, my patron saint, Feast of St. Joseph, March 19th is my birthday. I'll be 72 years old, 72 years old. As uh, Fazl says, praise the Lord. Amen. 72, praise the Lord. St. Joseph, spouse of Mary, intercede for us. Uh, today is the Feast of Our Lady of Lord, so we keep in mind all those who are suffering physical and spiritual trials and tribulations. As a matter of fact, let's pray right now. We always pray a Hail Mary for those who suffer physical and spiritual trials and tribulations, whether it be cancer, heart disease, strokes, um, uh, diabetes, right, any physical ailment, and then, of course, uh, suicidal ideation, clinical depression, any spiritual affliction, we pray a Hail Mary. Uh, so now let's ask Our Lady of Lords to intercede for all of those who suffer physical and spiritual trials and tribulations. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And then now, before we get to selective outrage, the great hypocrisy, selective outrage, let's uh, hear the words of St. Gemma Galgani, who we also memorialize today. I have the wrong date. It's not April 11th. It's February 11th. Lord, have mercy on us. It is Our Lady of Lords. I know that. Our Lady of Lords, the Song of St. Bernadette. For those who believe in God, no explanation is necessary. For those who do not believe, no explanation is possible, right? For those who believe in God, no explanation is necessary. For those who do not believe, no explanation is possible. That's from the Song of St. Bernadette. I think that quote is attributed to St. Thomas Aquinas. Of course, there's so many misattributed quotes amongst our saints, right? You guys are aware of like St. Francis supposedly saying, you know, uh, preach the gospel when necessary, use words. He didn't say that, but I'm pretty sure, you know, uh, uh, St. Bernadette was in the 19th century, 1858, she died. Uh, uh, of course, St. Thomas Aquinas, the angelic doctor, goes back to the 13th century, right? The 1200s. So uh, regardless, all right, uh, great words of wisdom from uh, St. Bernadette. And of course, St. Bernadette also said, it's not my job to convince. It's only my job to inform. And that's right. It's not our job to convince. It's our job to inform, to speak the truth. And then let the Holy Spirit do his job. It's the Holy Spirit's job to uh, uh, get people to open up their hearts and minds and then apply the truth to their lives. All right, the great hypocrisy. We live in an age of social media that has exposed the relativism of selective outrage. Now, this goes back to last year. We live in an age of social media that has exposed the relevation, the relativism, the relativism of selective outrage, which is a manifestation of a subjective morality. It is even quite evident amongst many people who consider themselves righteous, all right? And so this year, I say it a different way. I say it's the great hypocrisy, far more outraged over sins of those we agree with than the sins of those who think like us, right? And so I'm not going to give you many examples, uh, but 
uh, if you are aware of this, right, that we are far more outraged over the sins of those we disagree with than the sins of those who think like us. This is at the center, I think, of the criticism of Pope Francis, that those who uh, criticize Pope Francis are far more outraged over Pope Francis wanting to draw sinners Unto them, unto himself, unto the ch into the church, not to himself, but to the church. Right? Pope Francis wants to draw the LBGTQ, the right, the 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 pro aborts, right? All of these cultural sinners want to draw them into the church in the hope that the Holy Spirit will have some effect on them. And there's many who criticize that. Now they criticize him because they're afraid. They're afraid that the Pope, in drawing all these sinners to the church, is going to acquiesce to them and is going to tolerate them to the point where he changes church teaching. There's absolutely no indication of that. Now, these people who are afraid that that's exactly what's going to happen think it's already happened, right? They blame, they, they, they say the Pope... Pope Francis is a heretic, right? He's not a heretic. He's not changed any church teaching. But these same people are complaining about the Pope's tolerance of LBGTQ and pro-aborts and, you know, these sinful people, right? They hang around with sinful people, and some of these sins are more outrageous uh, than even what the Pope is uh, uh, uh supposedly tolerating, right? Because you have schismatics, right? Uh, I just became aware of somebody else who is a set of a contest who thinks that the uh, uh, Pope Francis is an illegitimate elected Pope, that uh, indeed that Pope Benedict never ever resigned his papacy and thus rendered Pope Benedict, uh, Pope Francis, illegitimate. Then I found out that this guy is guilty of so, so many things. And, you know, is this all quieted up? Is this all hushed up? And and then, uh, you know, I find out that that uh, there's a bishop who is uh, uh, doing work with him. You know, I, I mean, so you, you're tolerating this set of accountants who has personal issues, moral issues in his life, and you're tolerating him, and you're tolerating a schismatic like Vigano, right? Um, it, it is, see, and you're tolerating, all right, a laicized priest, right, who's been abjectly disobedient or got became laicized because he was abjectly disobedient to his bishop for seven plus years and then a serial workplace harasser. Um, this is selective outrage. It's selective outrage. We see selective outrage in the pro-life movement. It's rampant now in the pro-life movement where pro-lifers are outraged over the fact that uh, the pro-aborts, the Democratic Party thinks it's okay to kill babies up to the day of birth. But they think nothing of the immorality and the compromise how outrageous it is that they think it's okay to kill babies up to 15 weeks, which is 95% of the babies, right? Uh, my show partner, I should say, uh, he who I co-host with and, of course, co-founded the Men's March with Jim Havens, started, opened up a show one time uh, talking about how the pro-abort media lies, the secular media lies. And then after he got done, I said, well, I said, the pro-life movement lies all the time. They refuse to tell people about rape and incest exceptions. They uh, fail to tell people that indeed the reason why they're not behind personhood is because they don't want the criminalization of any women. They don't want equal protection under the law. They don't want to deal with contraception, in vitro fertilization, all of these things. 
right? So we have selective outrage. We see this with the leaders of the mainstream corporate pro-life movement all the time who uh, feign outrage over certain lifestyles and certain ways of doing things, yet they're guilty of similar types of sin. And this, what, this is what, you know, is what I'm pointing out. We've, we're far more outraged over the sins of those we disagree with than the sins of those who think like us. You see this selective outrage, right, between the political parties. The Republicans are far more outraged at what the Democrats do than than things that are immoral in their own party. And, of course, the Democrats are the kings and queens of selective outrage, right? The only thing that they are outraged at is is things that, that other people besides them do, yet they do the most outrageous things. So this is rampant. This is rampant. It comes down to each and every single one of us. We are all guilty of this at some point in time. We don't want to live with other people's dirt, but we're perfectly okay with our own dirt. That's just another way of putting it, right? Just another way of putting it. Uh, just last year, all right, I posted a meme, Mainstream Nonsense, how Kristen Hawkins claimed to support equal protection under the 14th Amendment, yet does not support the criminalization of women in any situation, all right? And then, of course, supports uh, IVF through the supporters of IVF in, in, as much as she claims that she's against the IVF, right? Yet she would complain about contradictions like that in other people. She'd be quick to point out those types of contradictions in other people, all right? And none of the people like Kristen Hawkins, the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, has ever, ever uh, made any type of conscientious effort to unite around and focus on the abolition of abortion through uh, the constitutional person and from the moment of conception. I posted something else here too. Who are you to judge me for being judgmental? And this is at the essence of all of this, right? This is the perfect example this is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. Selective outrage, right? We'll tell other people that they're being judgmental. How dare you judge me? But yet in saying, all right, that uh, in, in how dare you judge me, aren't you judging them, right? How dare you judge me for judging others, right? Who are you to judge me for being judgmental? This is the type of selective outrage, the hypocrisy that exists in, in, in just about every aspect of our life, our culture, within the church, in each and every single one of us. So as we prepare for Lent, as we prepare for Lent, wouldn't it be really uh, something good, sanctifying, holy for us to reflect on this, this hypocrisy in each and every single one of us. All right, let's do the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Angelus together. Hail, Holy Queen. I'm sorry, the Angelus together. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Uh, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promise of Christ. Let us pray. Amen. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation 
of Christ thy son was made known by the message of an angel made by his passion and his cross. Be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance remain with us forever. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. So here's another uh, example. This goes back seven years ago. And I posted this. Hey, everyone, I had a lengthy exchange with a typical progressive on a political site. Here was her final comment to me. This is classic. So this is her talking to me. I don't know you. And to tell you the truth, I wouldn't even want to talk to you. You're a very judgmental person. As far as I can see, you twist things around to suit you. I'll set the record straight by saying I'm pro-life. And I don't believe in abortions, but people, women, should have the freedom of choice. So she's pro-life. She doesn't believe in abortion, but women should have the freedom of choose choice. So I wrote a, pro, a pro-choice a pro pro-lifer. What bugged me about her, I twist things around to suit me, was that I had told her that obviously she was okay with pre-born baby killing, as long as other people did the actual killing. Now, I think that's a pretty honest assessment of her position, right? When you say I'm pro-life and I'm against abortion, but I think women should have the right to choose, and if they choose to kill their babies, I'm okay with that. Well, then basically you're okay with pre-born child killing as long as other people are doing the killing. But I guess that's also being judgmental, just another example of liberalism being a mental disorder, right? So again, this whole idea of selective outrage is just, it's rampant. So pay attention to it. And not just pay attention to it in in other people. Like whether, again, the Democrats, the Republicans, pro-life, pro-aborts, Right, those who are chronic critics of the Pope uh, versus, uh, well, chronic critics of the Pope, right, um, and uh, how they view themselves, and and you know, again, this whole idea of of charity, right? Some guy yesterday, um, where I said that I I have a problem with Mark Mallet because he supports false prophets, and I think in 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 material ways he's a false prophet. And then some guy says to me, says, well, by what authority can you make that statement that he is a false prophet? Now, this is coming from a guy who thinks it's perfectly okay to criticize the Pope, to say just about anything about the Pope. The Pope is a heretic, right? And so by what authority can he call the Pope a heretic or denigrate the Pope or criticize the Pope? And then he turns around, right, and says, by what authority, ask me by what authority can I criticize him or Mark Mallet or or Christine Watkins or Father Rodriguez or any of these people, right? You see that? Now, when I say this, we're all guilty of it. Right, we're all guilty of it, including me. So in this Lent, it's really, I think, behooves us to see it in ourselves. Right, to see this hypocrisy in ourselves, to see this selective outrage in ourselves. Right, that's what I'm getting at here. If you're seeing it others, then really it's a good chance that we're it's in ourselves. We always tend to see the sins in others that we struggle with ourselves. When we're virtuous, we usually don't really notice uh, the, 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 the sins in those areas that we're virtuous, right? That is uh, really, I mean, it's Adam and Eve, right? It's, it's really Adam and Eve, right? So again, Adam not taking responsibility for his sins against Eve, right? Uh, blaming God and E for his own sins. We do this all the time and we do many such things. All right, so my brothers and sisters in Christ, let us continue. Let's pray for the Pope, bishops, and priests. Father in heaven, we thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and through his death and resurrection has given us the hope of eternal happiness with you, Father. Send your Holy Spirit upon the Pope, all bishops, and all priests, that they may be for us bold witnesses of faithful love for the church. Remain for us examples of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. St. Joseph, St. Stephen, 
Our Lady of Lords, intercede for the Pope, all bishops and all priests, especially in our hour of need. Our Lady of Guadalupe, intercede for the conversion of the world and the end to abortion. Amen. We already prayed for those who suffer physical and spiritual trials and tribulations. Our daily offering, my brothers and sisters in Christ, where we offer up our entire day, our work time, prayer time, family time, recreational time, all of our spiritual exercise, our joys, our sorrows, our trials, our tribulations, our suffering to our Lord. Unite them all to our Lord on the cross and ask him to shed his mercy down upon us so we can share that mercy, spread that mercy with other people. Amen. This is how we pray ceaselessly, pray without ceasing, turn our day into a prayer. Realestateforlife.org, realestateforlife.org. If you need a realtor buying a home, selling a home, moving from a blue state to a red state, within a red state, uh, from a red state to a red state, you need a realtor buying a home, selling a home, realestateforlife.org, realestateforlife.org. Tell them I sent you. Uh, and indeed, my brothers and sisters in Christ, the realtor that you designate or they choose for you will donate part of their commission to a pro-life activist of your choice, of your choosing, all right? So realestateforlife.org, realestateforlife.org. Themensmarch.com, themensmarch.com will be in Temecula, Southern California on March 1st and 2nd. The event itself is on March 2nd. Go to themensmarch.com, themensmarch.com. Rallyforpersonhood.com, see how you can... How you can um, help us, help us create this national debate over personhood, that indeed we should abolish abortion, demanding the Supreme Court recognize personhood from the moment of conception. All right, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I love you. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. May Almighty God bless you all. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Again, protest child killing dot com, protest child killing dot com. If you can subscribe to my Rumble and YouTube channels, I'd appreciate it. If you can donate, protestchildkilling.com, pro uh, donate to Father Stephen Imbarato or Protest Child Killing. I'd really appreciate it. Go out into the world today, my friends. Give them heaven. Check out my mass, my homily, and Eucharistic adoration from this morning.